Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, so I've got my paints, they're mixed with a pouring medium. One part paint to three parts pouring medium. And I've got these gorgeous colour palette that I'm going to work with today. I'm going to list all the colours in the description below. But just to give you an idea, I've got an ultramarine, I've got a gold yellow, I've also got a green blue, that's by Pepio, that's an iridescent green blue. I've got one of my favourite colours, one of my favourite blue tones, which is Prussian blue. I've also got a sky blue and some iridescent gold. I also want to create some lacing. So I've got some Australian Floetrol, three parts Floetrol to one part paint. And I'm gonna use that to swipe and add some lacing. But first of all, I'm going to put the puddles of paint onto the canvas. The size canvas I'm using today is a 20 inch square. So 20 inches by 20 inches. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take each colour in turn. All those colours, again, are listed in the description box below. And I'm going to puddle the paints on before we continue with the process. This colour is the Green Blue by Pebio, Iridescent Green Blue. And the first colour I laid down was the Prussian Blue. This one's the gold yellow. It's such a rich kind of yellow gold that it's actually one of my favorite tones. And I really want this to take prominence in this piece. So that's why I'm putting this directly in the middle. This is the ultramarine blue. So I'm just layering that around the edges too. And all these colors are gonna really infuse and really work well together. You'll see what I mean shortly. And then to give it that extra balance, I'm just using this Sky Blue by Amsterdam. I'm adding this in the gaps that you can see here. And shortly, I'm going to take a marble and infuse this all together. And of course, it wouldn't be complete, would it, with a little bit of Iridescent Gold by Pebio. One of my favourite gold tones ever. So you'll see that I'm adding a few more puddles, but I'm not worried about going right to the edge because when I go to stretch this piece out, there's enough paint, there's enough volume of paint on there to be able to stretch across the canvas and down the sides. So that's why I'm not puddling right to the edges on the surface of the canvas. And when you're doing this, please don't be scared to stop, pause and really step back and have a look at what you're doing before you continue. You can see here I'm using a torch. That's just to get rid of any of the air bubbles that are in my paints because I've only just mixed them. Okay, so let's have some fun. <laughs> let's place the marble on the puddle. I've picked up my canvas and I'm literally taking the marble from side to side, tilting the canvas in one direction and then the other to help that marble move. I've used slightly bigger marble than normal because the paint's a bit thicker and the paint's going to help slow that marble down. Well, I hope it's going to slow it down anyway. I've not lost control yet, so just take your time, tilt from side to side 
and just have a look at the design that you're creating on the surface of that canvas by using that marble. You're going to create some really interesting lines. And I'm going to take you in for a close up now just so you can see some of the designs that we've already created on the surface of this canvas before we do anything else. And that's really interesting. We've puddled the paints first and then we've used the marble to infuse those puddles together and that marble has in turn created some really interesting lines. So I also want to include some lacing in this design. So I'm going to take my Australian Floetrol. That's mixed one part paint. It's Amsterdam Titanium White with three parts Australian Floetrol. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my palette knife into the paint and then swipe across the surface of that paint. So remember, when you're swiping, place your palette knife on top of the paint. Don't press down too hard, don't apply too much pressure and then allow that palette knife to glide on top of the surface of that paint. So when you put your palette knife into the paint where you're going to use it for the lacing, so the Australian Floetrol mixture, you're gonna ensure that the palette knife or whatever you're swiping with is covered. You're gonna place it on top of the paint that's already down and just slowly drag it and allow it to glide on top of the surface you're not going to apply too much pressure to that part of the process. And you can repeat this process as many times as you wish. I'm going to do it a few times because I want a good balance of block colour, of lines that were created by the marble, and now of the lacing that's being created using the swipe technique. So let's take a quick look at the pattern that's already been created before we stretch this out. So stretch out time. So I'm going to pick the canvas up. I'm going to get a feeling for the weight of the paint that's on the canvas. And then I'm literally going to take this time now to tilt from side to side. And to allow the paint to really stretch, you can walk the paint across the canvas. And I do that by going from side to side slowly. You can see here, just moving it from side to side, covering the full edges, the full sides of the canvas. And then I will let that paint go over the sides when I'm happy with the composition. And I'm just gonna continue doing that to ensure that the canvas is fully covered. Apologies if I go off screen sometimes, it's really hard when I'm dealing with bigger canvases, but you'll get the idea of tilting and stepping back and really having a look at the design as you go. And remember, don't be in a rush to complete this. Just take your time as you go from side to side and look at the design that you're creating. I think before I continue tilting, I'm gonna add in a little bit more of the lacing because I don't want to lose all of that because I want a really good balance of the blocks of color 
the lines and then the lacing. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more lacing now before I continue to stretch out this design. So now this is all about looking at the design itself and then stretching that paint across the canvas and down the edges to get a creation and a composition that you're really happy with. I'll take you in for a close up now of the wet version so you can see some of that detail that we've created. Some of that gorgeous lacing there within those blue tones. I really love that area. And then going across the design itself and having a look at all the other tones that have been created by infusing those colours and those lines together with using the marble. This is a gorgeous area here. I really hope that dries really well in that way. So I'm going to take you in just to show you some of this detail. I'm going to let it dry and then I'll show you a close up of the dried result too.
and here we go, the dry version. This isn't yet varnished. I do apply a high gloss varnish or a gloss varnish to each of my pieces and I usually use a spray varnish by Windsor & Newton. But the weather hasn't been great here in the UK in recent weeks, so I like to do a lot of my varnishing outside just so that I'm in the fresh air when I do it to minimise any kind of environmental or health impacts when I varnish. So yeah, this piece will need to be varnished, but I really love how it's turned out. I love the vibrancy of the colours. I love that balance of the lacing and the block colour and also the lines that were created using the marble. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great week ahead and I'll leave you with some of these details, but I really do hope I get to see you again in the next video. Thanks everyone and take care. Bye.